Good evening. Uh, my name is Richard. I'm a soft tissue therapist from the Physio Channel. Um, in tonight's episode, uh, the first tendon review, we're going to be asked the question, what do nuclear bombs have to do with Achilles tendons? Over to you, Daniel Lawrence. Well, that's exactly what I thought when I read a couple of research studies recently by Katja Heinmeier and colleagues from the Institute of Sports Medicine, uh, that's in Bisberg Hospital and Copenhagen University. The studies used the carbon bomb pulse method to look at tendon turnover or the lack of tendon turnover. Uh, so obvious next question for 99% of the people watching, but what is the carbon bomb pulse method? Well, it's a rather fascinating and it involves the Russians. During the Cold War, the prolific nuclear bomb testing between 1955 and 63, roughly, doubled the world's atmospheric levels of radiocarbon, known as carbon-14. And this radioactive carbon substance found its way into all living organisms. Tissues that regenerate, like muscle and bone, would reduce their carbon levels to reflect current atmospheric levels. But tissues that were developing during the carbon exposure period, known as the bomb pulse, but then retained high carbon levels despite much lower current atmospheric levels, were demonstrated to have a negligible or no tendon turnover. Incredible. Um, so when they test tendons or other tissues today, those that have a carbon level that's high are tissues that have a minimal turnover, regeneration or metabolism. Uh, yes, yes, that's right, Richard. Just as long as they were alive and growing during the bomb pulse or have not been exposed since. OK, so um, is this a type of carbon dating? I always think that carbon dating sounds like a geriatric dating website. Um, well, it's not strictly carbon dating in that carbon dating is used to determine the age of much older deceased organisms, but it is using the same radiocarbon and then correlating it with birth dates. So in short, no, it's not carbon dating, but it has got some similarities. Uh, okay, so um, can you tell us then what age do our tendons form? Yeah, that's a good question that was discussed in the research. Well, Heinmeier's initial research published in 2013 proposed that the Achilles tendon, that's the only tendon they researched in the study, reaches collagen maturity at around the age of 17, after which it does not renew its collagenous matrix. However, her team's recent study published in 2018 suggested that tendon maturity could be reached by an age of 13, which does seem remarkably low when you consider the height changes and hormonal changes that occur around this age from for this age group. Um, so how did the study identify 13 as an age when the Achilles tendon stops regenerating? Yeah, I had a look at that because um, I wanted to know. And basically, uh, five out of the six healthy tendons that they studied in the latter study, they were 13 at the start of the bomb pulse, but did not show increased carbon levels, which indicates that the tendon turnover had stopped and that the tendon had reached maturity before the bomb pulse. OK, so um, all very interesting, but what does it have to do with tendinopathy? Uh, well, I've been asked that question before. In symptomatic tendons, a substantial renewal has been identified, and what seems to be occurring within the tendon is that there are pockets of newer, higher turnover collagen mixed with older, unchanged collagen. And this is identified from the varied carbon-14 levels throughout the tendons that they studied. So the first thing the research highlights most positively for patients is that if you have tendinopathy, it's not only in the pockets, it's, it's only in the pockets, should I say, or fragments of the tendon, and it's not the whole tendon. Research also suggests that maybe the higher tendon turnover is initially asymptomatic and might be present for a considerable length of time before the symptoms actually present. Okay, thank you. Um, so a couple of other questions from our viewers. First up, is it true that the tendon core matures and the periphery renews? Mm. Yeah, I've heard that mentioned before. Um, this was postulated in the earlier study that I mentioned, the 2013 one, where they actually only analysed the core. In the more recent study, the carbon levels were reported to be consistent throughout the actual whole tendon. Thank you. Um, and finally, how does this relate to tendon loading? The fact that only pockets of the tendon are affected should encourage people to undertake loading programs without the fear of rupture. However, this does make structural tendon strengthening look less tenable and less likely 
but the influence of loading may influence those tendinopathic pockets, those tendinopathic zones within the tendon. So perhaps loading will structurally alter these. I can't see how identifying tendinopathy using the bomb pulse method could be incorporated into clinic, but the studies do add to our knowledge of why painful tendons can be so stubborn. Okay, thank you. Um, in our next episode, uh, we're going to review the latest research which challenges the use of isometrics. Isometric exercises have become the go-to exercise option for tendinopathies, but what is this based on and is this the best management option? Subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss out when we release the next tendon review in a couple of weeks' time. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.